Hello, I'm Rick Lancaster. Thank you for tuning in. Grab your Bible as we study through God's Word together. It's my hope that as we go through these messages that we will all grow in our understanding of God's Word. As we grow in our understanding, we'll also be better equipped to glorify God, bless others, and grow faith ours and others. If you have any questions about anything in this teaching, send me a message. I would love to connect with you. With that said, let's get into the Word and see what the Spirit would say to us today. Welcome to the Future Today Prophecy Meeting. Um, if you have your Bible and want to follow along, unless you're eating chocolate cake, which is a, actually a mandatory requirement for anyone in the meeting, you have to take a piece of chocolate cake home with you. Kidding. No, you don't have to, because I know some of you are, whatever. Cool. Uh, turn your Bible to Revelation, <coughs> Revelation chapter 13. One of the purpose of this meeting is to inform you about things that are going on in the world and how they relate to Bible prophecy. And we want our people to understand the times that we are living in um, and, and to remind ourselves about the hope that we have in Christ, that, that we can watch what's going on in the world and get, you know, get kind of rattled by it, get kind of freaked out about it because some of these things out there are pretty, I mean, they're in some cases even terrifying. And, and, and we need to understand that the Bible talks about a lot of that stuff. And if we understand how, how God has is, is, is to, told us, prophesied, foretold these things and what they're leading up to, then it allows us to be, just be better informed and we can be at peace as we go through the things that, that are going on. Jesus is coming back to get his Amen. church, right? We, we, we praise him. We're excited about that. And the signs of his soon coming are many. And one of the things the Bible says, that the closer we get to his coming, the more of those signs we're going to see and the greater intensity that those signs are. I haven't seen Randy's notes, but I'm guessing he's going to talk about the earthquakes um, and different things that are going on. All of those things are signs. And the Bible says those things are going to increase like a, like a woman in labor. You know, the closer we get to that time, the more intense and the, and the closer together those things are going to be. And what we as believers um, are not, shouldn't be shaken by those things. And, and there, there's ways of, that we need to respond to it. There's, there, we got to care about these things when they're, when they're happening around us or in, on the other side of the planet. But we shouldn't be, we shouldn't be shaken by them. And so some of the signs that are out there are not broadly talked about and and they and many of them are not well understood and so oh making sure that wasn't for me so in the seven year tribulation that that is described to us in revelation and referred to in in daniel as god is pouring out his judgment on the wicked God-hating, Christ-rejecting world, one man is going to rise to power. And we know him as the Antichrist. And he's going to have, he's going to dominate the whole world. And, and how exactly that's going to happen, it's not clear how he's going to pull that off. But we can see as we look around some of the signs pointing to how he's going to pull off some of the things we see described in the book of Revelation and other places. And the second half of Revelation 13 describes a second man who will come on the scene and he will support the Antichrist. Um, and we'll pick that up if you have your Bible to Revelation chapter 13. I will try to get there as well. I'm pretty sure I know where it is. Hold on, Revelation 13. Um, if you get there before me, just wait. Wait. Thank you. <laughs> Starting in verse 11. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth. And this beast is, is referring to, it's a symbolic of a man. And he had two horns like a lamb, spoke like a dragon. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast. First beast is the Antichrist. In his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast. That would be the Antichrist whose deadly wound was healed. He performs 
great signs, so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. We, to interpret that literally, that's what he, he actually brings fire down from heaven. He deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs, which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image of the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Now, this the second person who is supporting the Antichrist is the false prophet. So we have the Antichrist and the false prophet. They're the two uh, uh, key human players in the, the book of Revelation. Um, they, they play a prominent role there. Both of them will end up in the lake of fire before the end of the book. But here, pick it up in verse 16. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one has the mark of, or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is a number of a man. His number is 666. Now, as believers, we have no fear of the mark of the beast. You know, the mark of the beast is something that's going to come at least three and a half years after Jesus comes and takes his church out of the world. So all true believers will be taken out when Jesus comes and in, in the, the event we refer to as the rapture, the snatching away of believers. And so the, the, the mark of the beast is not something, we're not worried about, you know, accidentally or, you know, getting, you know somehow taking the mark of the beast you know, against our will or anything like that. We're not going to be here. We don't have to worry about that. Um, it's not going to happen until long after we're gone. What, what believers need to be mindful of, though, are the preparations that are already underway to facilitate the mark of the beast. So there are some things that, that need to come into play before the mark of the beast can actually be you know, facilitated. It's not possible until certain things are done. Until recently, the idea that one man could control all commerce, all buying and selling around the whole world was fantasy or science fiction. The world is too divided. It's too spread out. You know, there's, you know, too many barriers to it that it just wasn't humanly possible for it to happen. Every year, we're moving closer and closer and closer to it. You know, from, you know, from microchips implanted you know, the carrying all of our personal information. You know, it wasn't that long ago we would have called that science fiction. Now it's, you know, in, in full-blown operation in some places. And there's also, you know, there's just the globalization of everything. You know, you can place an order on Amazon and get something from China in like two days. You know, I, it, it's like, it's remarkable to me how, how fast you can, they move things from one place to the next. One big hurdle to the feasibility of this idea of controlling all buying and selling across the entire globe is money. You know, no one has absolute control over all the money. In that right now, governments control it, individual banks control it, you know, all, you know, there's, it's not, it's not under a single umbrella right now. So to have control over all the buying and selling, you need to be able to control the flow of money. And up until recently, that, that hasn't really been possible. Um, for decades, we've been, I mean, I don't know how long ago when it first started, probably back, it's probably been, it's probably been longer than decades. People have been referring to the idea of a cashless society, going to society where we aren't exchanging hard currency with one another. You know, it used to be that everyone carried cash, right? And we were, most of us are old enough to remember, you, know, you always had money. Well, if you had money, you always had money. <laughs> you know, now, it's, you know, I, you know if, if you ask my son, hey, you got any cash on you? Nope. He never has cash on him. You know, for him, he's, I got a card for that. And then, you know, he flips out his card. He wants to buy a soda. Boop, flips the card out. And they don't think, I mean, vending machines. You can use your card now on vending machines. 
And, you know, before long, they're going to try to implant you the chip so you can do it with your, you know, just put your hand up to it. The latest step in this process, or one of the latest steps, is the idea of a digital dollar. Anybody heard that concept, digital dollar? Last year, a Democrat-sponsored bill was introduced. It's referred to as the Electronic Currency and Secure Hardware Act, or the eCash Act. You know, and, and this is how it's described. If you look up for a definition of it, is, is hardware authorized to hold or facilitate transactions involving e-cash. They would be securely secured locally via cryptographic encryption and would not, this is the thing that I, I kind of grinned at when I read, would not be subject to surveillance, personal identification, or transactional data gathering. Like, they can't keep track of it. Okay, hold on a second. I know for an absolute fact they can. Maybe they say they're not going to, but anybody seen, you know, governments do things that we think that they shouldn't be doing? Has that ever happened? Um, probably not. Yeah, you know, the danger of something like this is that it creates a pathway for a government to have direct access to an individual's money. Right now, the, the government does not have direct access to our money. They can get to it, but they don't have direct access to it. And so that's what this does. This creates a, it's literally a government organization that is managing and controlling the flow of money. Now, there's probably little chance that it's going to pass. You know, the, you know it is the, this eCash Act is a Democrat sponsored bill. That makes me a little skeptical, skeptical of it right out the gate. Um, that there's, it's questionable right out the gate. It's probably not going to pass. But then, that was March of 2022. In the same month, President Biden signed an executive order calling for research on the development of a CBDC, or a U.S. central bank digital currency. So the Democrats in Congress are trying to do it. The president is, has written an executive order that it needs to be studied. And again, don't know that it's going to make any progress in the immediate future, but that is the direction things are moving. They're trying to move this concept forward. And if they keep bringing these things up, and they keep pushing it, they keep expanding their, their support base, and, um, you know, it's, it's eventually going to succeed. It has to succeed. It has to come to pass. Otherwise, there is no way for the Antichrist to control all the money. So there's got to be some system that he uses. Now, maybe it's not this system, but there's going to be a system. And so what these are doing, what we see here, is the, the, these, again, these pathways that are being created so that when it comes time, um, the, 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 the infrastructure is already there. The, inf the Antichrist isn't going to have to recreate all this stuff from scratch. He's going to take what exists at the time and use it to accomplish these things we see described in Scripture. That's the way we imagine it's going to happen. <clears throat> so, so at some point, there, there's, there's going to be this, this, this system that has control over it. And, and right now, the government says, you can trust us. You know, we'll be good with your money. Um, you know, and, and if you believe that, then okay. Um, Okay, um, there is a danger. Can we trust this government or any government to have the kind of power over individual lives, over individual people's resources and finances? Can we trust a government to do that, any government? You know, you, you want an example of what that looks like? Look at China. You know, they're, they're, they're probably ahead on this process, the whole world is moving toward it. I think I saw that there are over 90 countries that are actively researching and trying to implement and facilitate a digital currency to move away from hard <clears throat> currency. It's probably inevitable. And that would be my guess that, that it will come to pass. You know, we can stand up and resist it, which I believe we should. Uh, but 
I don't think it's a good thing. I think the, the danger that's associated with giving that kind of control to any entity is, is dangerous. And, and we know the more power that you give to any entity, any group, the higher the probability of corruption and abuse that, 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 that comes out of it. We cannot, we cannot be blind sheep that are just going along with whatever, what everybody else is doing and thinking that it's just, it's just all going to be okay. You know, we can trust, we can trust the Democrats. They're going to take care of us. No, no, we can't. So we share this with you so you can be informed. If it comes to pass, if it's going to come, I believe we should resist it. I think we should, we should not allow that kind of power and control into, into anyone's hands, especially a government who has proven itself over and over again that it, it really doesn't care about us. And it especially doesn't care about those who have conservative values. In fact, we see them increasingly hostile toward those with conservative values. So we should be very skeptical of, of these kinds of programs, and we should resist them when we are able to. What that means, I don't know. So what do we do? What do we do until then? Well, we do what we always do. We trust God. We pray. And we do whatever it is that he calls us to do. And most importantly, you see these happening? Look up. Jesus is coming. So you just keep that in mind. Amen? Thank you for watching this teaching from God's Word. It's one of my core beliefs. The Bible, or God's Word, has the power to transform our lives. It's my hope that these messages will help you to glorify God, bless others, and grow faith. If there's anything that we can do to help you with that, don't hesitate to connect with us. In the show notes, you'll find links to my sermon notes and other resources to help you in the study of God's Word. Sometimes we do need help to grow in faith. And if there's anything that I can do, don't hesitate to connect with me. I love talking to God's people about His Word. So send me your questions and I'll do my best to answer them. This message was shared at Calvary Chapel French Valley in Murrieta, California. If you'd like more information about the church, go to calvaryfv.com. The link is in the show notes also. Until next time, stay in the word and have a radical week with Jesus. Oh,